you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us No, you know that we can hold it down Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground And to all the listeners tuned in right now Got debates, analysis, and speculation This is sports talk for the new generation You know where to find us, got a reputation Sick podcast, your number one sports destination We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah Cause this is the time No way no stopping us Till we reach the finish line to listen to the sick podcast with tony marinara 55 seconds left in the penalty a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time boston four montreal three lafleur 
coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into the mayor back to the foot. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> You're in the fall. Sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est la bonne chose. Et c'est la bonne chose. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le 23e de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked a young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Bida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination. It's going to be sick. Marinero on this Tuesday, April 9. It is one minute past 10 o'clock, and the Montreal Canadiens have obliterated the Philadelphia Flyers by a score of 9-3. to three. There's so many things that happened in this hockey game tonight, one of which was Yuri Slavkovsky scored his first NHL hat trick. His first NHL hat trick, and he got himself in the Montreal Canadiens history books as well in some pretty fine company. Thank you very much. Another thing that happened is that Gallagher scored two goals. Another thing that happened is that Dvorak was back in the lineup, and he scored two goals. Another thing that happened is even Josh Anderson scored in this hockey game tonight. Another thing that happened is that the Philadelphia Flyers have officially quit on John Tornarella. If you haven't figured it out, as one wise man said a couple of weeks ago, he may have won that particular game versus Toronto when he made Sean Couturier a healthy scratch, but he probably lost his team in the long run because he treated his captain the way he treated him. I don't know if one's got something to do with the other. It was an opinion I had a couple of weeks ago, and I have to tell you, without being in that room, I don't know, but it looked like they quit on him. The Canadians scored five goals in a span of six minutes and 44 seconds in period number two. It was the student giving the lesson to the professor tonight, and it almost seemed like a team that looked at their coach and said, you know the way we treat us? We don't want to be treated that way in 2024. You see the way your former player treats his players? That's the way we want to be treated. That's the kind of guy that we want to play for. That's the kind of coach that we want to play for. Maybe I'm being too strong on John Tortorella because I'm not the president of the Tortorella fan club. Mind you, I do find he's a very interesting interview when he's in the mood to talk and not in the mood to bully. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Screw the Flyers. Who cares about them? Tonight, the Canadians won. All right, okay. They pick up points in the standings. That's something that doesn't make me happy. But what does make me happy is watching a lot of guys smile, a lot of people smile. All the fans that go there tonight, worth the price of admission. There's no doubt about it. They got no shortage of goals. There's so many things to talk about. I can't wait to talk to Maxim Lapierre about everything that transpired in this hockey game and that went down today. I actually think we can do a four-hour podcast tonight. I'm going to see if Max is up to it. All right, okay. I don't think I'm going four hours. I think I'm going to lose my voice by then. But anyway, the Sick Podcast is partnered and brought to you by Energy Transportation Group, a leading full-service logistics provider serving all of North America, driven to be different. Also brought to you in part by those guys right behind me, right over there. You know who that is? That is La Bitta TB. They used to be brewed in La Bitta B, but now they're brewed in Laval. With the Geloso Beverage Group, they are a winner of a dozen international awards. La Bitta TB offers quality microbrewery beers made with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bitta TB, embrace your true nature. Also brought to you in part by Playground. Experience Playground like never before. Enjoy world-class poker, 900-plus gaming matches and weekly events. Karaoke Mondays, comedy Wednesdays, live bands on Fridays and Saturdays, much more. Discover the latest editions, etc. Steakhouse, Drunken Dragons, Exquisite Sushi, the Esperanto Cigar Lounge, and... Babel Lounge's meds and cocktails. Playground is your ultimate destination for entertainment. Just over the Mercier Bridge, only minutes from downtown Montreal. Visit playground.ca for details. Without further ado, let's bring him in. Former Montreal Canadian. He is co-owner of La Poche Bleue, Maxime Lapierre. Comment ça va? Hello, my friends. Yes, sir. What's going on? Wow. What a game, eh? It was one of those games, eh? It was one of those games. And you... I know you are the president of the Uri Slavkowski fan club. So yes. I would imagine watching him do his thing tonight. Uh, look, it, it brought a smile to everyone's face. Phenomenal. I love it. I love, you know what? What a yeah. game. Hat trick is a, an unbelievable feeling in the NHL. But the reaction after the game when he was uh, 
having the interview with Mark Denis, the smiles, you know, he's having a lot of fun. You can yeah. see he's enjoying like the fans saying his name and all that. That's it's been a long time we're waiting for that player, Tony. It's yeah. been a very long time, and I don't want to put pressure on him because you never know. The he's still young. Next year is you know you don't know which kind of start he's gonna have and all that, but he's got all the tools to be a superstar in the NHL. And I'm seeing a lot of comments about the contract and all that. I honestly don't know what I would do if I if I were him. Like, am I going for a long term right away, or I want to prove that I'm that good and get even more? Well, look, if they give him a long term deal, he's he's going to get close to eight million dollars. What do you mean he's going to get close? It needs to be well, minimum eight million dollars. I listen. I understand and I agree with you. I'm just I'm going by. Do the Montreal Canadiens once again want to respect the whole thing of yeah. their captain being the highest paid player on the okay. team? Okay. Yeah. If they want to so, stay in line. You're right. With that, you're right. So let's say Dry Saddle is available. Let's offer him seven point nine to make sure he doesn't make more than Suzuki. It, Come on, Tony. Come on. All I said is maybe the Montreal. Yeah. Fall in line with that because they are get and something internally that that now having said that maybe it doesn't mean anything and the guy who was drafted first overall a couple of years ago is the guy who becomes the highest paid player uh, on the Montreal Canadiens and maybe maybe the highest paid player in the history of the franchise. What was the highest uh, paid Carey player? Price, Price, 10. 10. 5? Ooh, I don't know. But if I, if I'm him, I'm taking the guess. I'm well, unless it's a phenomenal offer. But I think he's got like he's got a lot of tools to be dominant, like dominant okay. in the NHL. So I don't expect a long term deal to be an average of ten point five or more. No. But if he takes a bridge like you just talked about, and he has two unbelievable seasons, the yeah. contract after that he's going to get more than ten million, right? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. Because because he's doing everything. That superstar don't normally do. They don't play defense. They don't play good defensively uh, with their stick on the back check. They don't sacrifice. They don't pay the price. So he's got everything. Honestly, I'm I'm sticking with the. I was comparing him at the beginning of the year, even when things were going badly. Let's say I was comparing him to Osa, and I I still think he plays the same way. Maybe a little different in the skating because he's a little he's a little taller, but. I see Marian Osa. This this is who I'm seeing. I played against him for many years, and the way he back checks and can turn the puck over and go on offense. That this is the player I'm seeing right now. It might change. A lot of people are saying Rantanen and players like that. Yeah. I'm seeing Marian Osa. It's a, it's an interesting name. Marian Osa was a fantastic 200 foot player. Yeah. He was a guy that you can trust in all facets of the ice. He was a guy you could put on in the first minute, a guy you could put on in the last minute, a guy you could put up if you're up by a goal, a guy you could put on, yeah. obviously, if you're tied or trailing by a goal. It's an interesting name. I think Rantanen comes to mind because Slavkovsky himself said, when asked, who's the comparable? And he said, Miko Rantanen. Uh, I, I think it has a lot to do maybe with uh, where Rantanen played hockey before and, and stuff with the fact that Rantanen's a winger, the, the fact that Rantanen was also, is also about six foot four. Look, they come like, from the same program as well, right? Yes, In Finland, yes. Like, so. Yeah. But, uh, you know, listen, obviously, Hosa is an interesting name. So, uh, look, Slavkowski gets his hat trick tonight. He scored every which way you can. He deflects a Michael Matheson shot on the first one. The second goal is a bang-bang play. Uh, the third goal is a stretch pass by Savard, who catches uh, Slavkowski pass. going in behind the defense. Uh, and uh, you know what? He picks the far side corner. And by the way, you're right. That was a great stretch pass. There were some great plays in this hockey game. Yep. But, uh, you know, when he scored the second, I tweeted. And by the way, uh, I take no credit for this, but I said, you know, two goals, 30 minutes left in this game. I saw the way the game was going, and I saw that Slavkowski was playing loose. He was playing like he was feeling it tonight. And I said, you know what? A pretty good chance. I think he's going to get his first NHL hat trick tonight. He got it. And by the way, something a lot of people aren't talking about, but Marty St. Louis sat that line out a couple of shifts tonight once he saw that they were, that the score was getting and yep. out of respect for John Tortorella. He said, 100%. you know what? Let me sit these guys because if, if he's on for another couple of shifts, who's to say this guy doesn't have a fourth tonight? No, hundred uh, percent, and I, that those are two great uh, things you mentioned. Because uh, I was watching St. Louis' reaction behind the bench, and you can see he's a winner. Like for me, a, a winner like doesn't disrespect his uh, opponent when things are going wrong for them, and he's just 
You know, he wasn't smiling, looking at as a, at Burroughs or Rabuda, or he wasn't going like, "Ha ha, we're having a good game." He was just Saw serious, that. That, out, yeah. of, out of respect, you know. And that's for me that proves again again that Marty Saint Louis is the perfect coach for this team right now. Look at yeah. every, you look at the players tonight, you know, like you look at the young guys, you look at the veteran, you look at what he's done with the Armia, yeah. you know, like it's. He did a great job. Look at the players. Let's forget about the standings, wins, and losses. I agree Look with at, you a thousand percent. Hundred percent. Like the players are unbelievable. Look and you know what? Anyone who disagrees, Max, honestly, anyone who disagrees, what St. Louis did with this group of yep. players and yep. this team this year, and they're going to say, uh, you know what? They only have four points more this year than they had last year. Suzuki has become a number one center in the National Hockey League. Cole Caulfield has hit 60 points. Best He's season. Percentages now. Madison. Big deal. Madison. Matheson's best. Matheson is unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Got more, he's got more points than Riley and Dalin. Slavkowski has uh, obviously uh, breaking out in his uh, second season in the National Hockey League and we're already starting to to blossom like a like like a flower. Um Uh, Yol Armia, the resurgence wow, wow. of Yol Armia, who also, by the way, deserves a lot of credit. We heard that he took it upon himself to go out and get a mental performance coach. He was lacking some confidence in himself. I heard Kent Hughes earlier today uh, with Frank Saravalli in the Daily Faceoff. We'll give that podcast a plug. Is that what he Why was not? saying, uh, that he was lacking confidence? He was saying that a lot of people were criticizing Armia for his care level, saying, you know what, look at this guy. He goes out there, he doesn't care. And Kent Hughes said, It was more upstairs for Armia, and somebody <laughs> needed to reinforce some things into him mentally, which happened. It was the mental part of the game, and he's much more happy. He's much more confident, and it's all yeah, coming well, together. Tony, why, it's why, why is he more confident? Because he's working. Like, let's come yeah. on. Well, I don't expect him to say he wasn't working, but yeah. yeah. So, look, uh, it, there's so many players who have improved on this team. That and you, you, you talked about St. Louis' demeanor behind the bench yeah. tonight. He's teaching all the guys too how to be pros, how to win like a pro, how to lose like a pro, how to play like a pro, how to conduct yourself like a pro. And by the way, those who are shortchanging him because no one's you cannot get 20 guys to go at the same time for yeah. 82 games a year, it's impossible. But yeah. those who shortchange St. Louis, they're not going to be here for long. And if the contract gets in the way, the second that it doesn't, or they could do something about it, they're gone. That's yeah. it. Yeah. They won't. Uh, we've been talking about the culture. Well, this is what's happening right now. They won't tolerate anything that doesn't look like their head coach when he was a player. You know, yeah. it's not about scale. It's about work. And you guys are. The, you talked about the fact that he wasn't smiling tonight when when this when the game started to get out of hand. Yeah. He calmed down big time. Let's make no mistake. Yeah. He probably ended Tortorella's season tonight. Well, well deserved, Tony. I'm sorry, but well deserved. I agree with you. Because this guy has been talking about team and sacrifice for the team for so many years. All he wants is the spotlight. You can say whatever you want. All he wants is the spotlight. He makes a big story out of nothing, and it's not once a month. It's once a week. Like, what is he doing? He's an experienced experience coach in, in the NHL. You said it, sat down the captain. The goalie had a tough performance two weeks ago. He's pointing him out. He, he had a tough one. Then he comes back and apologizes. I should not have said that. His team is playing, is fighting for a playoff spot. What are you doing? What are you doing? And, and like, by the way, he squeezed a lot of juice out of that orange for a long time this season. Uh, look, on paper, I don't think they have a great team. So I think Tortorella deserves a lot of credit for taking them to a certain point. However... When he had to try and hit the right buttons down the stretch to still try he and get some hard. juice out of that orange, he went, he overcoached, he went way too hard, he lost the psychological game, he lost his captain, he ended up losing his team, and he blew it. When push came to shove, he blew it. And I'm going to tell you something. Big I time. love the fact that a former player like you comes on a podcast like this one and says, you know what, good for you, I don't buy his act, blah, 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 because way too many people, I find, drink that John Tortorella Kool-Aid. They try and put it like, you know what? They buy everything he's selling. I'm sorry. No. I don't buy what he's selling. When coaches end up 
having tantrums like that or talking to the media like that or giving answers like that, it's usually for two reasons, okay? One, they're either trying to deflect remove the pressure off of their team and put it on themselves, which I'm sure he would tell you is exactly what he's doing. Or two is to put the spotlights on him so that everyone could say, Oh my God, Tortorella last night, what a press conference. Unbelievable. This guy's incredible. This guy doesn't care. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. All that stuff. I think that's exactly what he was looking for. Once again, I think it backfired and it doesn't look like they're going to the playoffs. And you know what? It was obvious. What what is it now? Eight, Losses in a row? Is it? Is it? What is it? It is. Or I, I, I think so. they're having a tough stretch. They're having a very tough stretch, and for me, it's the players saying, "You know what, man? Like you said, we're not playing for you next year." <laughs> yeah. And the wrong, the bad news is, I think that Dan- Daniel Briard loves him. I think, you know what, Tony? Let Let's be fair though. Like he had, he did well at the beginning of the year. Yeah. He got it. It. He got this group to believe that you need to work and they're working they were working for a long period of time they were in the playoff and they're not that good of a team i actually think the score tonight like it's a big difference but i think the habs are way better than the flyers and they were in a playoff spot not too long ago that being said i think when at the end of the season he was thinking about winning the first round more than than making the playoff he was yeah. thinking about pushing the players to another level so they can win yeah. the first round you gotta focus about making the playoffs first yeah Well, listen, I don't think even though he uh, he squeezed a lot of juice out of that orange that we talked about, I don't think John Tortorella is a fit for a team that I think should be rebuilding. I believe the Flyers should be rebuilding. They have nothing in goal. They have very little on defense. Their third and their fourth lines are extremely weak. Uh, yeah. They lack some balance on that team. At the four, at the center ice position, they have Frost, they have Lawton, they have Paling, they have Couturier. Yeah. It's not good enough. I, you know, There's three wingers on the team. There's not that much more. Anyway, enough of the Flyers. I don't want to talk yeah. about them anyway. Look, it's it's I don't know what we can a million ways we can go with this, but news came out earlier this morning. Our buddy Max Truman of Dani Kulis had told us yesterday via Twitter, now known as X, that Arbor Jackai was on his way to the United States. We kind of figured it had something to do with maybe going to see a specialist. The Canadians come out with a tweet earlier this morning. Let's bring it up regarding Arbor Jackai. Uh, will undergo season-ending surgery to his left shoulder tomorrow. He's expected to be ready for next season. There's a couple of words there that are key, I think. Uh, one is surgery. Two is left because the right shoulder was operated on last year. And three is expected to be ready for next season. So let's talk about all of that very quickly because it's the first news that came out earlier this morning was made official by the Canadians at 10 26 AM for a guy who played in the national hockey league for a long time. I don't know how many surgeries you had or didn't have, but I would imagine your teammates and former teammates had quite a few. And I would imagine, you know, a lot about modern day medicine. A guy like me who never played a day in his life looks at that and says, oh, my God, here's a guy who plays a tough game. Here's a guy who plays a physical game. Here's a guy who moves the opposition. Here's a guy who throws his body around. Here's a guy who goes initiating body checks. Here's a guy who uh, who takes on all comers, who'll fight anybody, uh, who drops the gloves. I get worried when I hear one shoulder one year, the next shoulder the other year. It's going to take him a while to start feeling comfortable. And who knows if he's going to be the same guy. But I never played a day a game in my life. You know a lot more about modern medicine than I do. Should the fan base be at all concerned about Jack Guy having his uh, second shoulder surgery on his other shoulder this time in a, in a span of one year? There's many things, Tony. First of all, I think it's it's way tougher to come back from a, an injury when it's a lower body injury or surgery because it's all about skating in this game now in 2024. But shoulders sometimes it's just you were weak or you already had damage and you didn't know about it since you've been we've been playing hockey our whole life so sometimes you just fix it you know sometimes you have to come back and change the way you're playing maybe hitting less or fighting less uh the reality is that i think we forget because it's been so many years we don't have the, the this type of player that the guys that are paying the price and playing the right way to win they're gonna get injured because you don't play in the nhl hitting crashing the net fighting blocking shots without getting injured it's pretty easy to to stay high in the zone and just wait for the puck not make the playoff you won't get hurt so we need to get used to to this because i i feel like that that's has been a subject for the last two years like yeah we changed the staff we're scared of injuries but that's reality 
players, look at Stone in Vegas. I know there's a lot of discussion about the Golden Knights and all that, but players that are playing the right way and win, they're injured. Look at Savard. He blocked shots. He broke his hand. You know, Kucherov was hurt. Stemkos was hurt. Vasilevsky was hurt. Edmund was hurt. Gallagher, the... bro Gallagher broke his hand twice when he was in his prime because he goes into the mix, he goes to the front of the net, That's and he gets hit by a shot. You cannot and by have the it way, all. He came back. He's still playing the same way. Tonight, when he deflects that puck, he's back in the front of the net. 100%. Then that's that's why you need players. You need a good third line. You need good fourth uh, good fourth line. So people are coming in when Gallagher's of this world are going out because of injuries. You need another tough defenseman when a guy like Jackye is out of the lineup. You know, we want to get win hockey games. We're gonna lose players often. That's it. It's that simple. Yeah. Well, in Gouli's case, it's got a lot of the fan base worried because it appears to be a concussion, even though it doesn't, it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, it's not going to be, it's not his first concussion. He's a young player that, you know, when it hits the brain, it's a, it's an injury that scares a lot of people. Did you suffer from concussions, Max? I know Guillaume Latendresse obviously did. He had many. Well, you know what, Tony, back in the days, we, <laughs> we didn't always know. <laughs> so, yes, for sure, because now when you read about everything, like every fight that I lost, that I got 10 punches and right on the nose it was probably a small medium like concussion you know so yeah for sure i had some happens a few times where i got hit and i was trying to find which which bench i was going on but yeah hey, that's that's the game right like yeah i i really feel bad for uh for our buddy jc by the way um who suffered one tonight i don't know if you know that who jean charles lajoie how well, it happens after every segment that we do together. He suffers a concussion. At 17 h 45 à tous les soirs du lundi au vendredi, il y en a un. On le salue en passant. Puis uh, we give him an open invitation on the yep. sick podcast whenever he wants. All right? Okay. Anytime. All kidding aside, uh, it's 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 actually it's a very serious issue. Uh, yep. You know, I've said this before, but I look, I suffered three or four uh, stupid accidents, that is. And yep. uh, they're not fun because the recovery takes a while. I can say that today I no longer have symptoms um, every now and then when the weather changes or whatever. But I rarely have symptoms. And so I count myself fortunate because yep. some of them have them, you know, basically for life. It's not fun. Okay. Yep. Um, so bad news for the Jack Eye family regarding Arbor. Yep. Good news for the Jack Eye family regarding Florian. So yep. after that news broke today, there was another bit of news that came out. This one regarding Florian Jack Eye. Let's see if we can bring it up. There we have it. The Canadians have agreed to terms on a three-year entry-level contract with forward Florian Jack Eye, who, by the way, uh, has uh, uh, been sent out to play with the Laval Rocket down the stretch in very important games for them. Let's bring up his hockey DB if we can. Put on my glasses. Because I'm losing my eyesight. By the way, uh, for uh, I've inquired about laser surgery. Uh, I I don't know why. Like I'm scared of my own shadow, but uh, I've just I've inquired because uh, this whole wearing glasses stuff, which I never wore glasses all my life, and the second I hit 50, I woke up one day and I couldn't see anymore, and I needed glasses. I don't know. I'd rather do the show without glasses, but. Uh, maybe they're going to call me. They're going to tell me what the procedure is all about. I'm going to get scared, check it out, and I'm not going to do it. But anyway, that's my story. Okay. <laughs> Florian Jack Thanks Eye. for sharing. <laughs> You're very welcome. I'm an open book, you know. Round four. Yeah. By the way, I'm feeling it tonight. You know, there's some nights. So I come from a radio background, as you know. Yeah. I used to host a three-hour show, okay? Yeah. Uh, radio was my first love. Podcasting has become my next love, which is my present love right now. But yeah. every now and then, you get that, that itch to go on for whatever and this and that and talk to the world. I'm in one of those moods tonight, so you can definitely do it right here on the Sick Podcast because I'll give out the number, and it's a one triple eight five eight five sick one triple eight five eight five seven four two five. I'll get to your calls maybe a little bit later. Anyway, Florian Jacki, a fourth round pick, one hundred and one overall in the twenty twenty three NHL draft. Once again, a left handed shot, a winger with the Hamilton Bulldogs, uh, same. Uh, franchise that his brother Arbor used to play for, of course. Yep. Uh, now, uh, and Brantford Bulldogs now, um, 65 points this year, a huge improvement over the 25 points the year before, a plus 17 compared to the minus 17 one year before. And this guy is getting pretty big. This guy is getting pretty strong, and this guy is probably just what the doctor ordered for the Laval Rocket. And uh, what a story, huh? You got one Jack guy here with the Canadians, and you maybe have another one on his way within a couple of years. 
Yeah, exactly. We were talking about it this morning with Francis Bouillon. He was talking about the brothers. And, you know, there's people that they just have character in life. They don't quit. It, it doesn't mean because you're not good when you're well, not as good when you're 16, 17, 18, 19, that you're not going to get to to the NHL and have a role within a, an organization that wants to win. And from what I've seen, and I'll be honest with you, Tony, I just yeah. see highlights. I'm not the type of guy that's going to watch every single game, but He's got character like his brother. Seems like it's yeah. a it's a family thing to 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 fight for, I, I for was everything. Just, you know? I was just going to go there. Obviously, the parents did an amazing job yeah. of, of of telling these kids that nothing is given, uh, that nothing is for free. Um, yeah. You know, besides the air that you breathe, and uh, don't shortchange yourself. Uh, yeah. Don't shortchange your teammates. You go out there and you fight for every inch of open ice that you can get, and they do it. And you're right; that's the one trait that, when you got to, when scouts go into those rinks, the one thing that is probably very hard uh, to detect is character. You probably yeah. end up figuring it out once you sit with the guy, once you meet with members of his family, once you talk to his coaches or his or his teammates or other people that have crossed paths with them. But yep. these kids, they ooze character, yeah. without a doubt. Do you know how good that is for the dressing room? It doesn't matter during the season. Just in training camp, you know, like there's some organization, you go there and it's just first and second rounder and everybody looks at each other in the room and we're so good and we're so young and I'm going to be a first liner. I'm going to be on the first PP. It's a different vibe when you look at guys that have been fighting their whole life just to get an invitation. And you look around and these guys are on a mission. Day one, first minute when they walk in the dressing room. So it changes the whole mood in the dressing room because you're a first rounder and you're like, wow, this guy wants my job and he worked makes, harder it, than me to get here. It makes for an interesting training camp. Exactly. Yeah. Then it's then it's it gets intense day one. Because hey, you hey, look these, around, you hey, know, these like, guys have so much character, they would fight each other in camp. Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. When <laughs> like a thousand percent. And then you look around and the first rounder has to work a little harder and they start blocking shot and hitting because they, they're like, he's going to take my job. Yeah. You know, like under that for sure he's going to take my job. So that is so good for the team. Him, his brother, the guys like Francis Bouillon, you know, like all these type of players are so important for an organization. Yeah. So for those who uh, I would imagine that mostly everyone is aware, of course, that Maxim Lapierre has his own podcast called La Poche Bleue with Guillaume Latendres. For the most part, they go about 40 weeks per season and they usually go on Wednesday nights at around 8 p.m. If the Canadians play on Wednesday nights, they make exceptions and they'll either go on a Tuesday or a Thursday. They also have uh, La Poche Bleue, Bleu Blanc Rouge, which actually um, is on immediately following Montreal Canadiens hockey games. So they're on right now. So imagine, Max, um, yeah. what a guy this guy is, okay? His own yeah. company has a podcast on live right now, also on YouTube in French, And he's joined me for so many Tuesdays this year throughout the season. I can never thank you enough. It's amazing by you to do that. Thanks for inviting and, me. Uh, you're very welcome. And um, and you helped the ratings, and I thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, earlier today, they actually, on an exception basis, they went out and they had a uh, kind of a morning podcast this morning with the Bleu Blanc Rouge. Uh, pardon me, La Poche Bleu went... Uh, La Poche Bleu went earlier this morning at yep. 7 a.m. And... Francis Bouillon, who helps the Canadians out in player development and follows all these prospects around and helps them out. He's kind of like a mentor, right? Kind of yeah. like an advisor, kind of like a big brother to a lot yeah. of these guys. Joined you in studio today, and uh, he was talking about the, the Jack Eye brothers, but he was also talking about... Uh, You know, all of them, right? They brought up all the prospects. Logan Mayu, uh, yep. Jean-Francois Hull, the head coach of the Laval Rocket, said that he believes that Mayu is the closest defenseman with the Laval Rocket to the big club right now. Uh, Bouillon reiterated that and obviously agrees with that as well. So if you have a chance to watch the podcast, it was a great podcast earlier this morning. He made a pretty uh, pretty interesting comment by saying that's the, the most talent he has seen since he's working for the management. You know, he says like some years at the beginning, he was going to work with the, the prospect and it was like in his head, no way this, these guys are going to play in the NHL. Said that now he's like, oh, which one are we going to keep? <laughs> you know, like we got so much talent on these, like which one are we going to keep? Because we cannot keep them all. 
without without giving away the whole show, here's another good one for those who are watching now. Asked about Caden Gooley. He said, when I used to go to Gooley's games and then I would meet with him after the game, we'd go out or we'd have a bite or we'd meet. We never talked about hockey because there wasn't really any advice I could give him. Yeah. He said he played a pro's game when he wasn't a pro. Yeah. And, you know, there's there wasn't hockey advice I could give him because he was doing everything right. I mean, isn't that high praise? Big well, time. He's a pro. And you can yeah. see... He's a he's a leader, you know. He's a good defenseman, and he's another guy that gets hurt that gets hurt because he's working hard. He's he's doing the right things on the ice. So, I think the the last hit was a little bit of a bad luck, but this guy does he blocks shot. He, he's physical. He skates really really well. Reads the game well. I think he's gonna be the perfect demon to put with a very like offensive player, you know, like on D. Like I think he's the perfect match. He's a he's a really good defenseman. I can, Tony, I now I'm looking and I I actually don't know who we're gonna keep, and that that makes me believe that we're gonna make a major transaction at one point. There's gonna be a trade that's gonna be a blockbuster at one point. We have too many D's. Like just think about giving one of them with a first rounder and a veteran. You, you're gonna get something solid. Is it gonna be next year or the year after? But it's gonna happen in, in the next two years for sure. Yeah. Um... And you know what? You bought you. You you got to know who the right defenseman to trade is. And you're right; it's going to be really, really tough. You know, you know. I, I know one thing, by the way. Speaking of defensemen, speaking yeah. of defensemen, Drysdale did not impress me tonight, man. Dash six, <laughs> minus six tonight. Oh man, he did not impress yeah. me tonight. He was yeah. not good, man. That happens. Stuff. He's he's still a young guy, but you, I I want to come back to our defenseman for a second. It's just. There's been an organization in this league that had so many good defensemen and they made mistakes and is the Nashville Predators. Yes. They didn't do what they had to do to to build a winning team out of their prospects on D. And if I'm can't use, I'm looking back at what happened there. Because it's 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 bad what happened there. They had every single good defenseman in the league. Yossi, Weber, Jones, uh Ekholm, they had the Ellis. Ellis. They had they had everyone. Yeah. Everyone. And yeah. they they couldn't get a superstar player to play with Forsberg. It's You're unbelievable. Right. It's You're unbelievable. Right. Yeah. So you need to take a little little note on that one. Yeah, you can make a case study even for the Edmonton Orders, who then they did it the other way around. They drafted yeah. everyone there was to draft at the forward position, especially centermen. Yeah. And in the end, they weren't able to balance their team good enough to win them a cup. But hopefully, you know what? They'll be able to win it this year. Let's see what happens. By the way, Yuri Slavkovsky, uh, I'm reading here on social media. I'm trying to get a hold of some of the uh, the, uh, the the post-game audio clips. Are you ready for this one? Mm-hmm. He said he's playing sick and he didn't sleep much last night. Well, easy game. <laughs> I don't know what kind of cough syrup he's taking, but I'll take some of that because I've been sick for the past couple of days. And you know what? I've been performing sick. Let me tell oh, you. You're playing well tonight, Tony. You're I'm on trying. fire. You're I'm on trying. Fire. You know, sometimes you go on the whole adrenaline and stuff. You go on the yeah, fumes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if there's some fire. We'll see. Yeah. Let's see. All yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, not, not, right. Yeah, that, not too much smoke because you okay, know your yeah. hair are getting a little curly when yeah, you okay, when you do that. Right, yeah. Okay, it's all gonna right. get humid and you're gonna be really curly. Okay, thank you very much. Why don't we bring up the starting lineup for tonight or or tonight's roster for the Montreal Canadiens? Let's do that. Suzuki with Slavkowski and Caulfield, Newhook with Armia and Gallagher, Evans with Anderson and Pearson, Dvorak with Harvey Pinard and Pizetta, Matheson, Savard, Harris, Kovacevic, Struble, and Barron. All right, okay. Uh, Dvorak, the Canadians announced. Yep. was going to be coming back. And I have to tell you something, because I give it to him every now and then. I give him a lot of credit. And the reason why I give him a lot of credit, it could be easy. You know, he's he got the green light, obviously. But it could be easy, could it not, when your season's over to say, yeah. I, I'm still not 100%. Yeah. But he didn't say that. He yeah, wanted you, to play. He wanted to be a part of it. And You know why? Tell me. Because you're looking at center. You're looking at Suzuki, New York, Dak coming back, and the way Evans has been playing the last few weeks. I need a spot next year. <laughs> yeah, no, no, but I, I hear you. But with, you with all due respect to Dvorak, he's not going to take Suzuki's spot or Dak's spot. Uh, so he, need, or- he needs a spot, though. You know, like he, he, need, he needs to come to training camp and be good enough 
So they have to move either Evans or a new hook on the wing. I hear you. Well, knowing that it's Dvorak's final year of his contract yeah. next year, and personally, I don't think he'll be back, even though I think he's he's an okay player. Obviously, played very well tonight. Yeah. I think they'll play him in his um, comfortable position, which is center. I don't think they move him to the wing on a year that's going to be you, the final year of his contract, you, and you they're possibly going to trade him. You need to push that guy next year because that's exactly the type of center that a playoff team needs if he's playing well. You know, like a third center that could play fourth line or third line. Yeah. When, when, you know, like he, he was supposed to be good, Tony. He was good when he was in Arizona. He was a good player. Like I watched a few games. I remember Andre Tourigny talking about he's a good player. Like the guy coming in Montreal is a good player. I actually thought for, for a moment that he was going to play, like fill a little bit of uh, Phil Deneau's role, but it wasn't even close. Injuries, tough years, you know, like. So if he can come next year and have like a really, really good season, hey, that's good for the Habs again. Let's go get a pick or let's go get something. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, Dvorak plays, comes up big, scores a couple of goals. Uh, Gallagher's got a couple. Slavkovsky, of course, we talked about it. He's got three. Josh Anderson scored a goal in tonight's game as well. And once again, we know it was a relatively easy game and the Flyers checked out at one point. But you see the way Anderson scored? That's something that he has the ability, I find, to do all the time. He's big. He's strong. He's got that extra step. Put your head down. Put your shoulder out. Protect yourself. Drive that net. Am I asking for too much for apparently, him to do that? Apparently, yes. Yes, Tony. The biggest issue with him is he's trying to be a goal scorer because he scored 27 goals one year, I think, 27. Yes. And that doesn't make you a goal scorer. That that means you had a good year. If you do it every season, you're a goal scorer. But if you had one good year, then hit, skate, go to the net. Stop waiting for the puck like you're Cole Caulfield <laughs> and stop skating around the zone like you're waiting for a player to make a pass like Nick Suzuki. That's not your role. Shoot the puck and crash the net. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. You know, I think he seems like a good teammate. Seems like he was working hard at the beginning of the year to get out of that situation he was in because he was hitting poles. He had breakaways. But that's not the case now. That's not the case now. He's he's checked out i'm like i'm sorry but he might be he might be hurt it might be tough for him that situation being out of the playoffs but i cannot go and lie and say that he's been working the last few the last few games it's impossible okay um i want to bring up rafael rv pinard yeah um There's so many good things to talk about tonight. I, I you know, he, he, he wasn't bad. RV Pinard wasn't no. bad. He, he made a good play on, on an assist on one of the goals there, um, which was Dvorak's second goal, if memory serves me well. Yep. But there's something that I saw tonight on social media, which was when I saw it, I was like, man, I knew this kid was having a hard time and he was slumping. But no, I didn't expect to see a stat like this. Um, he didn't have a shot on goal tonight. Yep. So... The assist that he got was his first point in his last 11 games. And the shot, it's his 10th game without a shot. Uh, for a guy who's hurt and had injuries, you got to you got to you got to get some stats up there. You got to get shots, you got to get hits, you got to be engaged, you got to do stuff. First point in 11 games, 10 games without a shot, doesn't have a shot tonight. Your thoughts? What's I think, going on? What's going on? I think that's big, it's going to be the biggest year of his career next year, starting in September at training camp. Uh, for Obviously, I'm not happy with the, the way he's been playing, and we all know 100% that's not a lack of effort. I, th I think this guy is working hard every you, practice, every you game. Wanted, you wanted to see him on the first line to start the season, and by the way, I'm not saying that to, to make you laugh. He was. I said it, I, he was, I, I was last year. You know? Yes, and I was saying, I, was saying uh, I think it was yesterday in the podcast that Even though it's it's something that will catch a lot of people's attention, yeah, your logic to it was Burroughs played with the Sedins. Yeah, Dupuis at one point played with Crosby. Talbot at one yeah. point played with Crosby. Teams 
don't usually look for trios. They look for duos and yeah. a complement to the duo. So yeah. I understood the rationale, but I just thought it was too much for him too soon. I'm not going to lie to you. I love the kid because we talked about character. Him, he's got character off the charts, okay? But I find he overachieved last year. And, you know, maybe he did, maybe he didn't because yeah. he had one great year last year. He had a very bad year this year. So it even it cancels itself yeah, out. So even that's so, why that's and, why and next maybe, year is a big year. Maybe next year he'll but he'll you know really what? answer the question. The the reality, uh, Tony, in the in the hockey world as players, we sometimes there's seasons you call it like chasing a season. Like that that he's been chasing his game shape. He got hurt, came back, got hurt, came back. That's that's really tough to do, especially when you're you're all about hard work, skating, and instinct. As soon as you feel tired on the ice, you don't see anything and you don't skate the same way. You cannot be physical. So for me, I, I want I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think about Rafael after maybe in November. When he comes, he's top shape, he doesn't get hurt, he has he has the whole summer to get back in shape. Then we'll see what he's made of. But next year is the biggest year of his career. Because if he's not ready at training camp, then then we're gonna remember the Raphael Arvipinal from this year, not the one from last year. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's move on here. Uh, so many other things to talk about. Let's go to um, Jordan Harris. You just talked about before, and you said, you know what? In the end, I don't know which defenseman they're going to keep. Every time there's a defenseman that goes down with an injury, it almost seems like there's somebody who takes advantage of the situation. The way when Jack Eye went down to the Laval Rocket, Struble took advantage of the situation. And every time Jack uh, Harris is out of the lineup, uh, and by the way, Harris was also hurt when Jack when um, Struble came up at one point. But now it looks like Struble has been finding his way over the last couple of weeks. I thought. He and um, Struble had together had played an amazing game about a week or two ago. I really liked the way they played. Really awesome. And then tonight, his first three-point night in the National Hockey League, a lot of people have wondered whether or not he can add any offense to his game whatsoever. Uh, he's not the biggest. He's not the strongest. He's not the fastest. He doesn't have the hardest shot. He doesn't hit the most. He's not overly physical. But he's smart. He does very, right. very smart. And Marty St. Louis, probably values the hockey brain over any other tool in your toolbox. So for us, or for most of us, it doesn't seem like he has an X factor, but he probably does. And it's probably his smarts, and it probably puts him, you know, above others in St. Louis' mind. I don't know if it does or it doesn't, because he's had less ice time than most, but tonight, He had way more than everyone else as the Canadians obviously managed Matheson's minutes and kept him down tonight. But 23-04 for Jordan Harris, three assists, a plus two. You know what? That there's so many things you need to analyze to build your defense. First of all, we all know with the salary cap, it's not about having the best decor. It's about having the best decor with a budget. We agree on that? Yeah. You, you're not going to get six guys making eight million on D. That doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So, who's the best player that you can have that you will pay between 2.5 and 4.5 at one point when they're in their prime? And I think Harris is that guy because you're going to put him on the ice and he's not risky. He's not flashy. It never happens that you say, wow, he had a tough one tonight. And it never happens that you say, wow, was he spectacular tonight. He's just there doing his job, doesn't do any mistakes, and he's a good player. You need players like that. You know? There's a concern that I have. Yeah. Um, right now, if I take a look at the Canadians' D, he is the smallest D that they have up here right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Don't forget Lane Hudson is on his way. Yeah. Teams that usually go far in the Stanley Cup finals or the Stanley Cup playoffs, they usually have a big D. You take a look. The Canadians went far a couple of years ago. Their top four were big. You take a look at Vegas. They won the cup last year. They were big on defense. Um, you know, I, I, now there's exceptions, okay? There's teams that have had small players before on defense, but it would mean it would mean two small defensemen at that point. So does his lack of size, considering that Hudson is waiting in the wings, do you think that hurts him a little bit? 
Well, first of all, let's let's let Hudson arrive. <laughs> you know, like he's he's got the full package now. Can he use it in the NHL? Because it's not the same league. So I'm gonna be. I know what's coming. I think this is great, but I want to see. I, I want to see him in the NHL against guys that are really good defensively and that are. I want to see how he's gonna react to big players when it's time to have a one-on-one -on -one battle. So for Hudson. Let's let's not let's not wait for Kale McCarrier. Let's wait for Lane Hudson and analyze what he's going to bring at training camp or at the end of the season or whenever he's coming. Uh, that being said, if I look at the the D's, Randbacker is going to be huge. Gooley is going to be huge. Jacki is going to be huge. Mayu, Mayu is going to be huge. They all they're all big guys. Struble's so, big. Struble's big. Strong. You know, Gooley. You know, like they're all big guys. Really so you can't you can't afford to have a high risk. And you you don't need six six good D's. You need seven. That's that's reality. You need seven good D's because they're never all in the lineup. There's always yeah. injuries, there's always something happening. So and Francis Bouillon said it this morning too. He said he's he said that Lane Hudson does moves that he never seen in his career. And he's been playing he's he's played a lot of hockey. He says, I've never seen those moves before this is all but, good. but the big question is whether or not it's going to translate to the national hockey league level exactly right? maybe now, it will maybe it won't now do you think they're gonna try to change him not under marty saint louis because that's that's the type of coach that believes in expressing yourself within your limits limits and with your identity on the ice it's you know like people were making fun of him at the beginning of the year. It's it's all about your game inside the game. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like yeah. Everybody everybody has their own game. Just find a way to bring it bring it in the team game. It's not the opposite. You know, don't don't change your game for the team game. It it goes together. You need you, it. You need to play a certain way, but respect the team concept. That's I think Marty Saint Louis is gonna tell Lane Hudson. Hey, do whatever you want, but make sure you come back if you lose the puck. Are you uh, are you a uh, Kovacevic fan? I love him. I think he's a great player. I think he does what, like, he he did well for for the player he is. He reminds me a little bit of what Josh Georges did for the team. You know, yeah. like blocking shot, like being a great guy in the dressing yeah. room. He doesn't say a word if he's not playing. Like that, you need that during a rebuild. You know. So so he's the guy that nobody talks about. Yeah. Okay. He's the guy nobody talks about. Everyone knows that with, with all due respect to him. Okay. I mean, the, the, the talent is somewhat limited. Okay. And, and so is the ceiling, but that's what I find uh, pretty interesting and pretty attractive about Jonathan Kovacevic. Jonathan Kovacevic, uh, after this year has one year left on his contract. He's getting paid $767,000 a year. Yep. All right. Uh, on the cap. Okay, I think the base salary is seven seventy five, but he's getting paid seven sixty seven. Okay, yeah. so next year he's at seven sixty seven. Yeah. He's the type of guy that, like you just said, because of his ceiling and it's somewhat limited, he's never going to be paid a tremendous amount of money. Any team would be very lucky to have a guy like that. And I and he's I waited. He's going to be I, number seven. I talked about this with Craig Button. I said, Craig, you know what Kavachevich is? Kavachevich is when you're playing. As I, for those who are going to be listening to this tomorrow, I move over and I grab my deck of cards, which is right above me. All you're right. Magi you're a magician now? Kavachevich is. <laughs> I wish I was. I would make more money than doing a podcast to tell you that right now. <laughs> so Kavachevich is when you play a game of rummy, you play a game of rummy, and uh, there's different ways you can play it. All right. Where I'm from here in Villa Sal, we play rummy 101 at the bars. Okay. Uh, I don't, but that's what they do. Uh, I play at home with my friends every now and then. Uh, and on the east end of Montreal, they usually play the game up until 150. So if you have all your cards in your hand, it counts for an automatic 100 points, okay? Yep. But Kovacevic is, and now we start talking about cards, which, by the way, has become another one of my passions because I'm really into Texas Hold'em right now. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to equate this to Rummy, okay? Yep. So when you're playing Rummy and you're playing to 101 and you have 90 points that you've paid, okay, and you've come down, you've come down, 
but you have a couple of cards left in your hand. Okay. Yep. You got four cards left. All right. You have, um, you know, you have one that's a runner here. Okay. If you have, uh, let's just say 90, you need some threes and you need some twos in your hand so that you could be under the cap yep. of the hundred or under. Yep. Kovacevic is one of those twos or threes in your rummy deck that you need because you can't pay a lot of points because you've already paid 90. So the rest of the team is 90, and then you need a couple of twos or threes so you can stay under 100. That's Kovacevic for me. Now, all the other guys in the organization, I think, some of them might be fours, some of them might be fives, six, sevens, that you'd have to pay eight. But Kovacevic, because of his ceiling, could probably be a two, maybe a three. That's very valuable in a cap a world. Very I valuable. A, I got a serious question, though, for you, Tony. Tell me. Did you need to take your car, go buy a deck of cards, and take 15 minutes to explain me that we need to sign a 7D? <laughs> Max, I'm different than everybody else. I don't know if you figured it out. Everybody else in Montreal would not do it. I'm different. <laughs> I'm made differently than everybody else. Did you friend. actually text your wife to send to bring a, a deck of cards? <laughs> no, the cards are right above me here in my room. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no. By the way, you know how many deck of cards I have in my house? I, I got about know. eight decks. I got a poker <laughs> table in my other room. I should have it here in this room. I got a poker table in my other room. On that poker table, there's about six <laughs> deck of cards. And in this room, there's another two deck of cards. Plus, there's three decks of Italian cards, by the way. Have yeah, you ever played Beach Club? Briscola. Have you ever played Briscola? No, I'm a little lost right now. <laughs> by the way, by the way, for those who are wondering, watch this. I'm yeah. going to freak everyone out now. I'm going to freak everyone out. Max? Yeah. Dice due tre parole in italiano. Tu in giocatore de merda. He basically said that as a player, I'm full of shit. All right? So for, for those who didn't know, of course, Max played in Lugano, Switzerland, which is probably about, what, 45-minute drive from the Italian border? From Milan, think? yeah. From Milan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Lugano before. I loved it there, what except for when I went to a fast food restaurant for four people and I paid like 80, 75 or 80 bucks. But, hey, one second. You know what? We're talking about the defenseman, but we, we always forget one name, and it's it's getting weird now. It wasn't weird at the beginning of the year, but... You get a defenseman now that's top 10 in points in the the old NHL. Matheson you get a guy. Is, Matheson yeah. is amazing. Yeah. No, I've yeah. said it. I've the guy, said it. I've yeah. said it since they acquired him that that deal was a steal. The second he got here, I said, this guy is better than a lot of people think. And today I tell you that Mike Matheson is amazing. And if I hear somebody else tell me one more time that Mike Matheson is a turnover machine or Mike Matheson is a liability, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to lose my mind. Well, I don't know what we're going to do because he's got 60 points, I think. He's top 10 defenseman. He's got more points than Riley, than Dalin. He's right. Uh, he, I think he's six, five or six points from Fox in New York. He's dash 26. I agree. You can fix that. It's easier to fix that than to go get a guy that can skate and a guy that can play offense. He's unbelievable. He hey. works hard. He's a leader. hey. hey. He's dash 26th on the sixth worst team in hockey. Yeah. That that has had pretty much everyone that he's played a game. He plays 28 with, minutes a night. Hurt. You know, like he plays 28 minutes a night. Yeah. With all due respect to the Canadians goalies who are very good. Yeah. But Dryden and Tretziak are not their goalies. No. Dryden and Tretziak are not their goalies. No. Uh, you know, uh, he, he's got uh he's got a, a young man yeah. on defense who's playing the offside of defense with him and i'm seeing Savard good point. i'm point seeing good for six weeks people in the chat are, are they they have a good point right now is he's, he's having a tough matchup imagine him on the second pair no oh, amazing you know amazing listen any team going into the playoffs would love to have mike Math matheson Any 100%. team going into the playoffs would love to have Mike Matheson. He's not expensive as well. And, and he's from here, and he wants to be here, and he's happy, and he's got a so, smile on so, his face. He's a so, proud competitor. So we have 
I'm, look, I'm happy you, you brought we, him up because we have a play, we have we have a player Larry. from Quebec. We've been asking for a player from Quebec for so many years. He's top 10 defenseman in the league in, in points, and people don't even put put him in the top six in the next few years. Disrespect. Disrespect. Big time. And and there's something else. Look, I wouldn't be surprised if they trade him in a couple of years because there's going to be so many bodies here. Like you said, there's only so many that can play. Having said that, yep. you do the exercise. You stay up tonight, okay? I'll play cards. You you go out and, and, and do some research if you want. You do the exercise. Teams that have won the Stanley Cup in the last 10, 15, or 20 years, most Stanley Cup champion teams, they have a 34, 35-year-old on their blue line. 33, 34, 35. It can't sure. be a coincidence. It can't. You oh, need sure. one of those guys who has played in playoff series, who's who's yeah. played with big time players, who's played in big games, who who has that experience, who won't get rattled by the situation. And by the way, Matheson, this is a pressure market, right? Even though they're in a rebuild, it's Montreal. All eyes are on you. Yeah. Matheson approaches every game like he's playing on Beaver Lake. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I love watching the guy play, man. No, nobody can match his speed. That's natural. That's it's rare that a defenseman can skate that way. And for a team that's rebuilding, and they're gonna they're losing more often than not, you're paying the big bucks to go watch the games. That guy, that guy puts a smile on your face. He puts a smile on your face. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you a quick story, right? I'll tell you a quick story. Yeah, bring, we need the cards. Like I need, yeah. like okay. I need to understand. Yeah. I'm more, I'm okay. more visual type of person. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to do this, okay? Yeah. So, uh, all right, okay. So, the Canadians played the Tampa Bay Lightning last week, okay? And uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they have um, uh, Victor Hedman, okay? Yep. He's the number one Yep. for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay. And Mike Matheson is the number one yep. for the Montreal Canadiens. Now, my son who's a Tampa Bay Lightning fan and loves Kucherov. And it's five or six years. He's telling me that Kucherov is the best player in the world. And yep. he's never like, he's never watched more than five hockey games in his life. And I think he, all this time he's been right. Okay. Yep. So Hedman's the number one for Tampa. Matheson's the number one for the Canadians. And even though Tampa won that night after two periods of play, my son sent me a message that on that particular night between Hedman and Matheson, he thought that Mike Matheson, was the king. Whoa. <laughs> no, honestly, you know, you know the way in the National Hockey League there's Mick David and McKinnon and Kucherov, yeah. and there's just some guys they're in a different category. Yeah, you're the Kavasovic of like, podcasting. Like, 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 no, I'm not the Kavasovic. Well, yes. Yeah, I get paid like Kavasovic. You're right. Uh, God bless the yellow. He does live in a mansion, by the way. And I'm, and, and these are this is a fake wall, and, and the foundation of this house is made out of four straws. But I got to tell you this. I'm in another category. Look, now I got the whole thing. I can incorporate this. You know what? Hold on. And Yellow's going to call me after the podcast. He's going to say, I got a great idea. A card show from Playground. <laughs> so next week, I'm going to be doing a card podcast. <laughs> 12, 12 months per year, June, July, August card show. Oh, my God. Um, so listen. Um yeah. If I understood our messages, uh, the, the message is correct. Uh, you have uh, committed to joining us for the entire summer. <laughs> so, so I saw Maxwell was that I saw him yesterday or two days ago. So I said, uh, so I said, uh, he says to me, he goes, uh, so by the way, I think it's, uh, so tomorrow night I'll join you on the podcast. He says, it'll be my last one for the season. I said, your last one for the season? What are you talking about, Max? I said, I'm going 12 months. He goes, you go 12 months. I'm not going 12 months. Okay. I'm going on vacation. What do you, hey, what are you talking about in July and August? The weather? <laughs> you get your card, it's going to be a rainy day tomorrow. So Go, no golfing. Go, we're talking about Kovacevic again. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and Harris. What and do you talk about in the summer? Seriously. You know what? <laughs> There's always a story. It's the Montreal Canadiens. There's always a story. It's the Montreal Canadiens. So um, the I want to get to the uh, Accent Insurance Solutions moment of the hockey game. Can we bring that up? Accent Insurance moment of the game. All right. For me, the moment of this hockey game has to be Uri Slavkovsky scoring his third goal of the hockey game. Uh, scores his first NHL hat trick. The hats are flying on the ice. You see the fist pump after the goal. Uh, the nice stretch pass from Savard. He makes the move in close. His uh, shot was really accurate into the far corner. And uh, there's a, a chart that came up here. We have it. I think we have NHL stats coming up. Slavkowski finds himself in the record books in some very elite company with the Montreal Canadiens. Youngest Montreal Canadiens players with a hat trick in franchise history. Stefan Riche. On March 17, 1986, scored a hat trick. He was 19 years old and two months. Wow. That's or amazing. 19 years old and uh, probably, no, pardon me, no. 19 years two, old and two. 283 days. Exactly. Tony. Okay, got it. Exactly. Uri Slavkowski, I, I had to put the glasses on. Uh, Uri Slavkowski uh, tonight, April 9, 2024, 20 years old and 10 days surpassing Guy Lafleur, who had did it at 20 years old and 143 days, had also did it at 20 years old and 88 Unreal. days, and had also did it at 20 years old in 82 days. Uh, but uh, Uri Slavkowski now number two in franchise history. Yep. Uh, Ryan Paling's also there at 20 years old and 93. But uh, the guy who's number one on that list and the guy who's got who's number three on that list and the other guy who is number eight on that list, Bernie Jeffrion. Hmm. So Lafleur, let me just see again. So Riche was one, Lafleur was three, Lafleur was four, Lafleur was six, and Jeffrion was eight. The reason why I brought up those names, do you know why I brought up those names in particular of the entire list? Riche, Lafleur. And Bernard Boom Boom Jeffreyon. Let's see if you can guess why I brought them up in particular. Uh, well, maybe uh, you should grab a deck of cards. It'll probably make you think better. There, I don't know. They were goal scorers, young, big bodies. Like they scored fifty goals. They were okay. fifty goal scorers. Yeah. If you had to bet right now that Yuri Slavkovsky will have one season in the National Hockey League, that he'll score fifty. Would you bet yes or no? I would bet that he will win the Stanley Cup before he's going to score 50 goals. You like that? I like that. And I'm going to tell you, and I said this before, and you know what? Uh, the beauty of podcasts is that when you're right, you can go out and get the tape because it's always there. It's in a library, as you know. And yeah. uh, the downfall is, is that when you say stuff, it's going to be there forever, too. I've said yeah. this before. I'm going to say it again. I have a lot of confidence in this management team. I do. The job is the, the the job is not over yet. As a matter of fact, there's going to be some very very tough decisions that are going to shape this franchise for good over the next couple of years. But if I were a betting man and I had to bet, and this is the first time I've said this, I think they're going to win a Stanley Cup here. I really believe that. I think they're yeah. going to win a Stanley Cup. I don't know if it's going to be in five or six years from now, but they're going to win a Stanley Cup. And uh, this podcast, when they're going to be in that Stanley Cup final, yeah. Fire, on fire, my friend. Yeah, it's, on fire. It's gonna be. They, they, they're starting to have the the base to to build a winning team. That's yeah, for sure. Then we got to be honest, and there's still a lot of work to be done. Yeah, you know, they they they, they have playoff type of players. They have Slavkowski. You know what? And That's if they win, you know, I, I got, I got the, team, the, 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 they all get bonuses, the, right? The yeah, go. Go ahead. But, How do we say it? Tabarnat. Do you think Suzuki can score 50 goals? You've been you've been the captain of his fan club, so be careful your answer. Suzuki to hit 50. Suzuki to hit 50. 
Suzuki to hit 50. Okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to say no. You got to keep in mind, Connor McDavid has been in the National Hockey League for a decade. Okay? He scored over 50 once. Okay? Yeah. Um, Connor McDavid's not a shooter first. Austin Matthews is, and Austin Matthews scores more goals than Connor McDavid does, for example. Yep. I don't think Suzuki's a shooter. I think he's a playmaker who this year, it hasn't been going in for Caulfield, and so he's been shooting more often. His shooting percentage numbers are extremely high. It's, it's, it's one of those years where it's just everything he touches turns into gold. Going forward, Caulfield's going to score more, and Slavkovsky's going to score more. I'd love to see Nick Suzuki score 50 goals one day, but it's a big number, and I think this Canadiens team is going to have some shared scoring. They're going to have other guys that will score. Uh, other guys that will score. I'm going to say no. If you would ask me if I think Nick Suzuki is going to score 40 one year, I'll say yes. 50, when you're such a good playmaker, it's so hard to hit that number. It's a hard number to hit. Yeah. Okay, no, how about you? What do you say? I say no, but I, I wouldn't. If it happens, I won't be shocked. Because you got a guy in Safkowski that is a playmaker and is in front of the net. So if he gets the puck for him and goes in front of the net, it's either him or Caulfield that's they're going to score goals, you know? Plus, never forget that right now, it is a possibility at one point that Caulfield becomes Doc's winger, you know? And you might get a passer on the first line. That that's, that's possible. a possibility. Yes, that, that's possible. You 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 are gonna have to think at one point that you need a second line. We're all happy. We had a great. They had a great season. They're the first line. We're not making the playoffs. That's cool right now. That's that's yeah. We, we put the three best players together and that's it. But next year you need a second line. So yeah. how are you gonna build it? You know. Well, in an ideal world, you go out and you get two players for that second line because you don't want to break something that's working. Like they say, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Anthony Martino of TV Sport. Well, what do you mean if it ain't broke, ain't, don't fix it? We didn't make the playoffs. He, well, yeah, but c'est pas à faute. It's not because of Suzuki or Slavkovsky or Cole Caulfield. They're mostly two, Max. Yeah, I know, but they, they did well, Tony. But yeah, they well, they did, they did do well. They did great, Max. They did great. They did great. They, they Anthony did great. Martino tweeted today that five on five before tonight's game. As a line, they're sixth in the National Hockey League for most goals. And goals on attempts, they're also top six. Those are amazing numbers. Yes, they play a lot. Yes. Yeah. Yes, there's less pressure. True. They had a great season. They had a great season. They were worth right. the price of admission this year. Can they get better as a line? Yes. Yeah. If you if you if you change a player for a, a little better, can can you get better? Yep. Exactly. So what's what's the point? They had a great season. We didn't make is, the playoffs. It, it's a it's a is, team game. Is Cole Caulfield an untouchable for you? Because no. I get the feeling the way you talk that Slavkowski for you is an untouchable. You correct me if I'm wrong. Hundred percent. Suzuki for you is an untouchable. You correct uh, me if I'm wrong. Hundred percent. I even think you think Caden Gooley is an untouchable. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hundred percent. Caulfield is touchable. Is. I heard a comment. I, th I think he's a guest on your podcast. Uh, the snake, right? Is that possible? Yeah, yeah. Simo, the snake. They call him the yeah. snake. I call him Userpent. I saw that on 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 Twitter or X today, and I, I thought it was a pretty smart comment. That to win, the Canadian needs Caulfield to be fourth or fifth best forward, and I I hundred percent agree with that. I don't you agree need, with that. No, Suzuki, no. Slavkowski, Doc. If he's supposed to be the player, he is. And yeah. one guy, and he, so now he's already fourth or fifth, right? Okay. I'm going to squash that right now. You want to see the way I can squash everything in two seconds? Yeah, let's go. Okay. Name me the uh, Vegas Golden Knights top three forwards last year in the playoffs. In the playoff? Yeah. What do you want to know? The stats or the best players? Name me their best forwards last year in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Eichel, Marcia was the MVP, Barbachev, 
right. Perfect. Huh? So so how how big is Marcia So? Yeah, but what does it have to do? But that's because I bet you that's the snake's logic. The fact that Cole Caulfield is not a big guy, and for the Canadians to go far, he can't be one of their top line no. guys. And what I'm saying is, if Marcia So can have the success that he's had in the National Hockey League, it has nothing to do with Tony. this year. What does it have it to do with that? It has to do with skills and work ethic and like the way you show up every game. Like, is he better than Slavkovsky in his prime? No. Is he better than Suzuki in his prime? No. No, when okay. when bef- I don't when have a Doc- with that, by the way. Okay, when Doc was playing amazing and wasn't hurt, w- was he better than Doc? No. Well, he 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 had a he had a he had a different strength. His he, he was scoring. He was bring a better in, scorer than okay, Doc. Bring, bring but- in a free agent this year, a guy that can score and play on the first line. He, he's he's fighting for the third, fourth, or fifth spot, Tony. Like he's not a one or two. Maybe, maybe, he's, yeah. He's not yeah. a three. Maybe so he but needs he, to be fourth but, or fifth. But he 100%. might end up being on that team that can go far or way win a Stanley Cup, he might be the player that might score goal, more goals than everybody else. He might be their top goal scorer. Tony, listen he's, to me. Phil Kessel was scoring goals. Yeah. Yeah. Was he number one, two, three on the, in his team? No. no. He was no. very, very important. Very important for the power play and for playing on the first or second line. Super important. But I don't think he's... I don't think if you want to win the Stanley Cup that he can be your number three or two. I that understand your point. I understand that, your point. That I'm, doesn't, not saying that, I'm not saying that he would be your one or two because uh, Nick Suzuki is the best player in the Montreal Canadiens and Yuri Slavkovsky probably has the highest ceiling on the Montreal Canadiens. So I understand your point. And that, 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 that doesn't mean he's not a good player. That means yeah. he's a phenomenal player. But to win the Stanley Cup is a big challenge. You know, the, the, the step is way, way higher than this. So... You know, like, l- l- just look at a team like Vegas. They yeah. got the four lines are on the real, <laughs> you know? You like they, Colorado, like Tampa, they, they're, every player is great. You know, like, you have, in, let, let's say in, uh, in Tampa, because they're a little bit older, you got Kucherov, Stamkos, Point. Does that mean that the guys behind are not good? They're phenomenal. They're unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. They want Stanley Cup. They have stats. So I, I, I agree with, with snake i think and i don't really know him but i saw the comment on on x and i i agree with that okay no it's listen it's a fair point there's no problem no problem where do, where do you put him i think once again that even if they go very far he could end up being the guy who leads the montreal canadians in goals until proven otherwise um i think he has well i mean I don't think Suzuki is going to outscore Caulfield all that much more over the course of their career. I think Caulfield's having a down year. His percentage is down. He's coming off shoulder surgery. I think he'll be able to bounce back. But because he's the leading goal scorer on the team, it doesn't make him the top, the best forward or second best or third best. I understand your point. I get it. I understand your point. But I think that if Marcia So has had the career that he's had, and maybe call me I, crazy, I think that Caulfield can have a very hey, good career as well. I think I think he's a phenomenal player. Like he's he's great. He's a goal scorer. But I I, I just want to. But uh, you would trade at... him for somebody big who would go in the corners and go to the front of the net and all that stuff. Okay, I got a question for you. Yeah, and I know where you're going. Would yeah. you trade? Would you trade him for Brady Kachuk? Brady Kachuk scored like 80 something points last year and I'm he got 35 you, goals this year. Would well, you, you, would you I, trade I, him? I think you would have to. I think you would have to. Okay. Okay. Let, I, I got the stats now. Wait, wait, you think Ottawa would trade Brady Kachuk for Cole Caulfield? Huh? You think Ottawa would trade Brady Kachuk for Cole Caulfield? I don't know. That, that was just a question. And when you don't have I, your... wonder, I wonder what Brady Kachuk would do for the Montreal Canadiens locker room, though. They have such a great, great room right okay. now that La- you know, I wonder if, if you would break it. If you look at. Caulfield in the NHL, okay? Let's forget the seasons where he played 10 games, but he played 67 games one year. He had 23 goals, okay? This year, he's got 24 goals in 78 games. Last year, he had a phenomenal stretch. He had 26 goals in 46 games, okay? Mm-hmm. That being said, Cole Caulfield is not 18 years old. He's going to be 24, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's... I want to be honest to the game, of hockey that he's a great sniper he shoots the puck well he's skilled he skates well 
Pe- people love him. I love him. But he he's not halfway to 50 goals yet. He's he's halfway to 50 goals. Can we wait until he's at 40 goals before we say he's a 50 goal scorer? Because he fair, fair enough. Because he's not an 18 year old coming at training camp and we're saying, wow, this guy's got potential. He's gonna score 50 one day. He's But played it, in the NHL and he's gonna be 24 years old. He he's scored not, he scored 26 goals in 46 games okay, last year. Well, he was on about, his way when he went yes. down with that injury, and he's coming off a of shoulder surgery. He's unreal, Tony. I'm yeah. not, I'm not saying he's not a 50 goal scorer, but can we just focus? This year he's playing well defensively. He's playing better. He, he has improved. He's got 60 points. You think I care if he score he scores 50? Hey, 60 points is great, man. Yeah, I rather that he score. I prefer to see Cole Caulfield score 40 goals, 45 goals, and cheat a little less and play a little harder defensively. He's a better player now than he ever has been. He is a better player. Thank you. That's yeah. my point. Maybe it takes a little more time when your first language is French, but that, that's, it took no, no, me no, half hour to get there. It took me yeah. half hour to say he's better this year than it was the year before. Were you playing with your cards or what? Is that what happened? I was, I was actually looking for my cards. All right, actually, okay. I, I found your pictures. Okay, since it doesn't look like you're going to be with us uh, over the next couple of months, Well, even you can't, even you even, can't call me if there's a, a, a special show. I'm not icing you for the rest uh, of summer. But. Okay, okay, because I, I around the draft, I'd love to have you around the draft. Well, I'll, you, you want to come to Vegas with me? Where? <laughs> eh? For the draft, you want to go to Vegas you, for the weekend? car player now? No, no, for the draft, it's going to be in Vegas oh. at the Sphere. If I pay your trip, you're going to come. We'll do a draft special. We'll see. Okay. We'll see. You know, I've never been to Vegas. Come on. Never been to Vegas. I don't think you're ready. I don't, I don't think, think Vegas ready is ready. For for, Vegas. Maybe Vegas isn't ready for me. <laughs> I show up with my cards in my pocket. <laughs> no, I've never I've never been to Vegas. And uh, I think we're talking about it. if there's one year that it can happen with uh, and this is going to be the last in-person draft, right? Yeah. It's the last in-person draft. Yeah, that's uh, that's that sucks. <laughs> Sorry, my language, but it's I don't like it either. Like you know the, what they want to do the, what the other leagues do. Uh, you're you're your own league. You don't have to look at what other leagues do. Do it your way. You know what? Other leagues don't have fighting either. But why do you guys still have fighting? Yeah, but my my point is, is the best day of your life. Like getting to physically wear that jersey for the first time is. You want to be there? Yeah, it's a special moment. I can't. Uh, I, Eric Lindros was so excited to put on that jersey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They gave the jersey, kept it in his hand. I'm surprised he didn't like it. Just, uh, you know, wrap it around his stomach or whatever. Or just tuck it into his oh pants. He yeah. wanted no part of it. That was unbelievable. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Okay, so since you're, it's your last show and you're only going to be able to join us if something crazy happens in the Montreal Canadiens world. Yeah. Look, it's 11.18 p.m. Eastern time right now. Yeah. Okay. We stay until three. No, I got a, I got a, I got a 7 a.m. flight to Toronto. <laughs> Are you leaving tomorrow morning to go to Toronto? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Business or pleasure? What's going on? Business, always business. Yeah. Yep. You know the 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 beautiful podcasting world. Is there uh, is there some kind of uh, gala or anything, or are you going to meet with some of your uh, your? Oh, bosses? just uh, the, the casual business meetings. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. You want me to come with you or what? <laughs> yeah sure just i'll be waiting for you <laughs> i'll pick you up at 4 30 i hey, wish Tony, I, i wish i, I would have known you had an early flight i would have let you go early i just i uh, i, I, I want to say thank you first of all for thinking of me uh inviting me to the show it was a, it was actually a pleasure for me to do a show in english uh is is the first time it was uh it's fun you're sometimes i'm looking for my words and all that then i think your crowd the, the people yeah. watching thank you very much because you guys are fun I've, i've been reading you and it's always positive comments and it's, it's been a blast so uh obviously i yeah. will wait i will wait like uh Kovacevic's offer from Tony and his yeah. group, but we'll see what happens next year. <laughs> Listen, Max, uh, I, I thank you uh, as well for giving me an opportunity on your podcast and on that platform. I, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, you and I had a little bit of an exchange. Uh, you come on mine, I come on yours, and uh, and it seems like everyone was happy. What I can tell yeah. you is, look, uh, I love all my collaborators. I think I have a special connection with all of them. Um, I'm very meticulous about who I choose to put on. Uh, for me, they really have to bring something to the table. And you bring a lot to the table. Like there's a lot of boxes. And personally, 
I find that you check every single box that there is to check. And based on some of the feedback that I get, a lot of people love you because uh, you're very personable. Uh, you're very funny. Um, you're very analytical. You also have that sense of media, but you have that former player mentality. And you can talk to us about what goes on in a locker room and what goes on on the ice. And you can look at it so many different ways. And there's not a lot of people, Max, who have what you have. There's not That's a lot funny. of people who have what you have. And uh, you know what? I have to start another podcast tomorrow or uh, or I'm back on the radio tomorrow or I'm back on any platform. And they tell me, you know what? Uh, choose your collaborator. Uh, you know? Uh, Maxim Lapierre is very, very high on my list. So Thanks. let's put it that way. I, I appreciate so, it. That's very nice of you. Thank you. You're very welcome. So merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. I think tonight was another great podcast. Yeah. I thank you all the best with the La Poche Bleu. So what are you guys doing with La Poche Bleu? Are you staying on until when exactly? Uh, I would say beginning of June. When when we start the Stanley Cup, we're, we're done with the podcast until September. All right. Okay. So uh, most of June off. July off, yep. August uh, off. Yes. And Mid you're back half in of September. Middle of September. Yeah. We like vacation, you know, like it's it's fun. You relax, go on the beach. I'll just say this. God bless you. <laughs> Bye, Salut, guys. Uh, have a good Thank night. You. All right. Merci there beaucoup. you have it. Maxime Lapierre de La Poche Bleu. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. Uh, we had a really good time tonight. I want to thank Energy Transportation Group for their partnership and their sponsorship. Of course, I want to do the same thing with La Bita TB. I want to do the same thing with Playground, and I want to do the same thing with Accent Insurance Solutions. The Montreal Canadiens win by a score of 9-3. to three. John Tortorella seems to have been losing his team over the last little while. They completely checked out. Um, Dvorak was back in the lineup after a long time off. He got a couple of goals. Gallagher got a couple of goals. Three assists for Jordan Harris. But the big news, of course, Yuri Slavkowski, at the young age of 20 years old and 10 days, picks up his first hat trick in the National Hockey League. Good for you, kid. Good for you. If you liked it, like it, share it with your friends. Comment sick, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K, S-I-C-K. For Agnello and Sammy and Master Control. And by the way, leave us a five-star review on Apple. It's our way of feeling the love. For Agnello and Sammy and Master Control, they're Cavallaro. I'm Tony Marinero. Have a good night. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination.